In the heart of Japan's Osaka Bay lies one of the most daring engineering feats in human history, Kansai International Airport. Built on an artificial island, it was hailed as a triumph of modern technology, a $40 billion wonder that promised to elevate Japan's status as a global transportation hub. But what was once a symbol of progress is now facing an existential crisis. Kansai is sinking, inch by inch, year by year, into the very waters from which it rose. The question isn't just why this is happening, but whether it can even be saved. And at what cost? By the 1980s, Japan was riding the wave of an unprecedented economic boom. Osaka, the nation's third largest city, was a bustling hub of industry and commerce. But its main airport, Osaka International Airport, was struggling to keep up. Overcrowding and noise pollution in the surrounding neighborhoods had become untenable. A bold solution was needed. The idea to build an airport on an artificial island was both audacious and practical. The sea offered limitless space, eliminating concerns about land acquisition and noise complaints. And so, in 1987, construction began on what would become one of the most complex engineering projects ever undertaken. The project was ambitious in scale. Engineers needed to create a man-made island large enough to accommodate two full runways, a sprawling terminal, and all the infrastructure required for an international airport. This required moving over 21 million cubic meters of soil and rock to create the island's base, which was fortified with a combination of sand, gravel, and 1.2 million concrete blocks to form seawalls. At its peak, more than 10,000 workers were involved in the construction. But the challenges weren't just logistical. Osaka Bay's seabed was made of soft, compressible clay, a geotechnical nightmare. Engineers knew that any structure placed on this unstable foundation would inevitably sink over time. Their solution? Massive steel piles driven deep into the seabed, acting as anchors to slow down the rate of sinking. When Kansai International Airport opened its doors in 1994, it was hailed as a symbol of human ingenuity and progress. This was not merely an airport, it was a bold statement of Japan's technical expertise and its ambition to lead the world in modern infrastructure. The futuristic Terminal 1, designed by renowned architect Renzo Piano, was a sight to behold. With its flowing curves, extensive use of glass, and innovative roof design, the terminal exuded a sense of modernity and efficiency. Stretching an incredible 1.7 kilometers, it earned the title of the world's longest airport terminal, a feat that showcased both architectural brilliance and functional design. Inside, the terminal was equipped with cutting-edge technology automated baggage handling systems, advanced air traffic control, and energy-efficient infrastructure made Kansai a model for airports worldwide. It wasn't just an airport, it was a vision of the future. Leaders, engineers, and citizens celebrated its completion as a moment of national pride, an engineering achievement that would secure Osaka's place on the global stage. However, behind the triumphant facade, unsettling signs began to emerge almost immediately. The artificial island, painstakingly constructed to host this engineering marvel, was not behaving as expected. Engineers had predicted that the island would sink by 11.5 meters over the course of 50 years, a figure that, while significant, was manageable given the structural safeguards in place. But within its first year, the island had already sunk a staggering 7 meters, a pace far exceeding the most pessimistic forecasts. This rapid subsidence sent shockwaves through the engineering community. Publicly, project leaders reassure the world that the sinking was simply an accelerated phase of the consolidation process, one that would soon stabilize. Behind closed doors, however, concerns were mounting. Many experts questioned the long-term viability of the airport, worrying that the structural integrity of the island could be compromised well before its anticipated lifespan. To understand why Kansai International Airport is sinking, we need to delve beneath the surface, literally. The foundation of the artificial island sits atop the seabed of Osaka Bay, which is composed of thick layers of soft clay. This clay is notorious among geotechnical engineers for its high water content and extreme compressibility. Unlike solid bedrock, which can support immense weight with little deformation, clay reacts very differently under pressure. When the enormous weight of the airport's infrastructure was placed on this clay, it triggered a geological process known as consolidation. Consolidation occurs when the water trapped within the tiny pores of clay is squeezed out under pressure, causing the soil to compact and the surface above it to sink. 
This process is gradual and can take years or even decades to stabilize. While engineers accounted for consolidation in their original models, they underestimated the complexity of the seabed's composition. Osaka Bay's seabed is not a uniform layer of clay. Instead, it consists of multiple layers of varying thickness and properties, each compressing at different rates. This variability created a domino effect, where the faster sinking layers triggered subsidence in the layers above and below them, accelerating the overall rate of sinking. Adding to the problem was the sheer scale of the project. The weight of the terminal, runways, and supporting infrastructure placed unprecedented pressure on the seabed. Despite the use of advanced engineering techniques, such as preloading and the installation of steel piles, the island continued to sink more rapidly than anticipated. But geological challenges are only part of Kansai's problem. The airport's location, five kilometers offshore, exposes it to the full force of nature. Typhoons, common in this region, batter the island with high winds and torrential rains, while storm surges test the resilience of its seawalls. Rising sea levels, driven by climate change, add another layer of vulnerability. What was once an engineering solution to noise pollution has now become a battleground against nature's elements. Furthermore, the island's sinking has made it increasingly susceptible to flooding. As the island lowers, its protective seawalls lose their effectiveness, leaving Kansai vulnerable to inundation during severe weather events. Engineers have had to continually raise the airport's runways and terminal buildings to compensate for the subsidence, a costly and labor-intensive process that shows no signs of abating. Faced with a relentless sinking, Japanese engineers have deployed a series of innovative solutions to keep Kansai operational. The first step was to stabilize the island by injecting cement into the clay layers. This technique, known as grouting, helped reduce subsidence in some areas, but wasn't enough to address the larger problem. Next came a more radical approach, hydraulic jacks. These devices, installed beneath key structures, allow engineers to physically lift parts of the airport that are sinking unevenly. Adjustments are made periodically to ensure that runways and terminals remain level, a painstaking process that requires constant monitoring. Advanced technology plays a crucial role in this fight. Engineers use sensors and computer models to monitor the island's subsidence in real time. These tools provide early warnings about potential issues, enabling a proactive approach to maintenance. But even with these measures, Kansai continues to sink, albeit more slowly than before. It's a race against time, and one that Japan can't afford to lose. The financial cost of maintaining Kansai is staggering. The original construction cost of $20 billion has now ballooned to over $40 billion when factoring in ongoing repairs and upgrades. Each year, millions are spent on subsidence control alone, making Kansai one of the most expensive airports in the world to operate. There's also the environmental cost. Kansai's construction disrupted marine habitats, and the ongoing subsidence affects water flow in the bay. Environmentalists argue that the airport's presence has permanently altered the bay's ecosystem, with consequences that are still being studied. Despite these challenges, Kansai remains a vital part of Japan's aviation network. Serving over 30 million passengers annually, it connects Japan to the rest of the world and supports the region's economy. For now, it's a success story, a testament to human ingenuity in the face of adversity. Looking ahead, Kansai faces tough choices. One option is to continue with existing maintenance strategies, pouring billions more into subsidence control. Another possibility is relocating some operations to other airports, though this would diminish Kansai's role as an international hub. And then there are even more ambitious ideas, floating airports, new artificial islands, or even a complete redesign of Kansai's infrastructure. Each comes with its own set of challenges and astronomical costs. The story of Kansai isn't just about one airport. It's a cautionary tale for other ambitious infrastructure projects worldwide. As climate change accelerates and sea levels rise, the challenges faced by Kansai will become increasingly common. It forces us to ask, how far are we willing to go in our pursuit of progress? And how do we balance innovation with the forces of nature? Kansai International Airport stands at a monument to human ambition, a bold vision carved out of the sea. But it also reminds us of the limits of our control over nature. For now, the fight to save Kansai continues, one adjustment, one innovation, one inch at a time.